Hello all, welcome to the last video in our series called Sex and Stuff. Uh, before we get to the topic, I do have to say we make reference to two videos in this series, in this video, uh, one on gay sex and one on masturbation. However, uh, we were told that they were too hot for TV by the Florida conference, and so they're not available. So, you know, you don't go looking for them. Nothing's gone wrong. We've just taken them down. Uh, and I hope that this one stays up because I don't think there's anything inappropriate in this video, but of course I didn't think there was anything inappropriate in the last two either. Uh, so we'll find out because pornography is this week's topic on the live show. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show coming to you not live but pre-recorded from my front room aka Kindred Studio A. My name is Chris Hayden. I am the pastor of Kindred UMC. I'm Anne and I'm the treasurer for Kindred UMC. I'm Brandon and I'm the only one that can find a talk about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's technically true. I'm also the most fun. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> You're, I would have it no other way. You're the one we wanted to talk about, sex and stuff. What was what was your title before? It was <laughs> queer your, sex enthusiast and advocate. Your, yeah, your local queer, queer positive sex, sex, yeah, yeah, sex advocate. Like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something. Oh, <clears throat> some alphabet mafia nonsense. Some alphabet mafia. Did you I put them up? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to make that joke, but I think I'm allowed to laugh at it. So I, it is hilarious. I appreciate it. <laughs> These people took up a third of the alphabet. <laughs> um, so we are content. This is our final uh, series or our final episode, I guess, in our series called Sex and Stuff. And uh, we have talked about many sex and stuff stuff. And now we are finally at pornography. And um, it may surprise you to learn that the Bible does not have much to say specifically about pornography. <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't really much of a thing. Uh, when, when the Bible was written, it wasn't a thing. But now times have, have a changed, and uh, so now we should probably have a conversation about it, because it is like... Extraordinary. It's become like a, Yeah. It, OnlyFans uh, has doubled yeah. the social oh awareness gosh. for yeah. paid, like, digital sex work. Yes. Yes. At, like, and the accessibility. I am a 40 year old man, and from my pubescent time to now, there has been a radical shift in accessibility to sex work like to videography mm -hmm. to like and 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 not even that because now there's vr too like, ne sure. like pornography is Blow the hurdles the doors to the see naked yeah. people performing sex acts have wildly reduced since the time that i was like I'm a, like 13 you know oh, yeah. like it, it it's incredible so it you know it, it bears the que it, it begs the question it, it bears looking at what what is a Christ a proper Christian like posture towards pornography so to get us started I have chosen just a couple of scriptures for us to kind of look at this is from the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 just the one verse Jesus talking but I tell you, and I also used this when I was talking about um, adultery and divorce, but it applies here too. Uh, Jesus says, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, of course, this is very, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I feel compelled with uh, especially a, a gay man here to talk about, like, this is a very... Uh, male-dominated, heterocentric, and but that's the nature of the culture. I think it's safe to assume that this applies more broadly than that. 
you know, like like Back any. I thought around. I thought we could watch porn. Yeah, you couldn't. We, that's what it just said. The boys can do little dances, yeah. and you just have to yeah. be sad in the corner. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and then this is from First John, which is it's technically an epistle, but it's more of a homo. Anyway, it's a it's a letter that somebody wrote to churches. First John chapter two verse sixteen it says, "For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh." The lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And in this case, he's he's borrowing from Paul, like the worldly things being a metaphor for what's like not heavenly, you know. Sure. Uh, not that you should hate everything in the world, but, but we have to read a little more deeply into the metaphor of what's going on. If your mission was <clears throat> cleanliness, close to godliness, yeah, then, then worldliness would not be it for you. Yeah. Um, cause you know, uh, everything of the world is not bad. Like mm-hmm. for instance, food, <laughs> you know, for instance, sex for that yeah. matter, you know, like everything of the world is not bad. Everything of the world is not bad, but, uh, what they're doing is they're linking lust into, and I think lust is ne- necess- necessarily linked like porn necessitates lust, lust necessitates porn. Like I think they're interrelated. Um, and the Bible ha- it is pretty clear that lust is not good for us. It is bad for us. Um, so I want to just open by asking very broadly your experience and your uh, as much as as much as you feel comfortable sharing. Your experience with pornography, your experience with Christian teaching about pornography, uh, your opinion about, like, where do you sit, where do you stand, and and this is a judgment-free zone, and anybody who judges in the comments, then I'll argue with you, and I'll, and I'll win, because I'm, I'm, I'm really good yeah, at arguing me. with people on the internet. Um, but yeah, so like, just what's your kind of just first impressions with the concept of faith and pornography? I don't remember the church ever really talking about it when I was a kid so much. Like really? we had one, yeah, we had like one conversation one time about because it was a much older male teaching the Bible study, and he talked about like stealing some magazines that were in the fire pit to be burned or whatever, and they were <laughs> yeah. like nudie magazines, and like yeah, that my, was kind my of my first <laughs> experience with pornography as a, a pubescent was literally just a mag. Like there was an older guy who stole a magazine from his dad, <laughs> and he showed me that magazine, oh, and like man. that was pornography. Yeah, know? like and it and it took a lot of doing to like get to that point. Sure. So like we right. like we were actively searching for it. Like yeah. show me some boobies, please. <laughs> like that's that was my whole goal in life, you know. Yeah. And it took a lot of doing to get there, you know. You didn't have Google. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. And we all have pornography devices, each of us right yeah. now in our pockets. Yeah. We have the entire world of pornography, like things that would never have even occurred to me as a yeah. as a young man mm-hmm. uh, and now it's just it's all right right there right there. Down. Just, just in seconds in seconds yeah. you know regardless of wi-fi i have yeah. verizon you know, i can just like it's i'm constantly connected to it you know like yeah. that's a wild difference anyway, oh yeah sorry go ahead no you're okay but um and i don't know if like because like we talked about with the masturbation conversation i think that there's certain things that Maybe not so much anymore, but at least when I was a kid, they were kind of treated different for the boys versus the girls, you know? So, like, I don't know if it was that they pulled the guys to the side and had a whole conversation with them about, you know? I think very broadly speaking, there's there's something to that. Yeah. Like, the boys tend to be... Again, the, this is the very movies. broad, general speech. Like, there are always exceptions to all of this, and, and like, that should be a part yeah. of the conversation. But generally speaking, guys are, are, like, more visually stimulated when it comes to sexuality. And broadly speaking, women are more, I don't what would you call it, relationally motivated? More, like, more like dynamic? Yeah. Kind of, and like, I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly how to describe it, because I'm, I'm not a woman. I, like, and I'm... I've you haven't been broken one, that you know? right. <laughs> like, Yeah. Um, but there is yeah. something to that, too, that I, I think, in very general terms, men are more susceptible to the concept of pornography and more, like, they indulge a little more. 
But also, in recent times, we've learned a lot that, oh, no, there's plenty of porn out there for women. Like, women oh, are yeah. very engaged in pornography, way, way more so than people originally suspected, you know? I wonder, though, if that's... So part of my next bit is I don't necessarily have a problem with the, the press... Like, porn itself. It's what it can lead to. Because it starts on, like, a... Two people consensually doing whatever that's working for you to get you going, fine. But then it leads down this path, especially with that little device in your pocket. When you're flipping through the magazine, it's only going to be what's in the magazine, right? <laughs> Limited yeah. When, it's, uh, when you're point. on Google, boobies turns into this that turns into that. Like, it's a dark path that it can take you down. Well, there, yeah, there, I think there's something about, um, oh gosh, what's the word? It's like uh, taboo. Taboo yes. is the word. Like there's the curiosity kills the cat. There's something about taboo, mm -hmm. and when you have access to nearly everything, taboo becomes a thing that leads you down that path. Or at least that's that's that is the the process that a lot of people kind of find themselves trapped in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm All excited. Right. Are you ready? I'm so excited I, for what you're about to say. <laughs> is that path just like kinkier sex? Like, what exactly are we talking about here? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I think it can get a little dark. Absolutely. Like, it can so get... Let me, absolutely. So let me paint a picture. This is a true story from my real life from a person I talked to uh, who will go unnamed because of the confidentiality involved. There was a person that I worked with, served with, and, and um, he was becoming involved in the church, and I was a leader in the church, uh, and he didn't know kind of how to handle this situation. And so he just, like, reached out to me because I, cause, cause I'm, I'm also a very sex-positive, very, like, open guy, you know? And, uh, and so he reached out to me. He's like, I, I really need to talk to you about something. I want to get involved in leadership in this church. I believe in what you're doing. I want to help. And he was a very talented guy. He had specific gifts and like, we definitely could use him. And he, then he told me his story about how he went, how he got involved in child pornography. Oh, yeah. Like that's, a, that's yeah. the bad, that so is like, the bad version. <clears throat> and like we talked <laughs> and he, you know, he had been through the legal system. Mm -hmm. So like he had, you know, kind of paid his dues essentially, you know, had, had, had done what the law required to recover and, and was also vehemently con, like committed to. So I, so I was able to really, really talk with this guy about like, okay, what the hell happened here? You know? Yeah. Um, and, and his description, and I, you know, I apologize if I'm paraphrasing this badly because we talked for hours. I mean, yeah. like, because I, I literally had to make a judgment call and I did it with the help of my pastors and leaders. I was like, well, their confidence up to a point. Like, I'm going to share this information with other people. You need to know yeah. that. Like, and he was like, yes, I understand, you know. Some things are mandated. Um, yeah. But essentially, it, it, it was this, like, progression of taboo. It starts with, can I see naked people that I'm attracted to? Yeah. Right. Can I see those naked people doing other More things to things. each other? Yeah. Can I see those naked people doing like bad things to each other? Can I see even and and like it, yeah. it gets progressively yeah. like how about what if uh, um, for example one of the most prominent <laughs> genres of pornography is incest porn. And it's like and that's a taboo thing. Yeah, it's because it's wrong. Yeah, you know and like that's that's kind of the danger of pornography. Right. It, it it has the tendency Which, to pull us further and further into taboo when we have this much access especially with uh like more access to pornography content less access to like pot like good sex education this is this is how we yes. like are you educated and informed like when you experience this we can draw the line in reality which is increasingly challenging to do for students these days they have a hard time with critical thinking and like fiction and non-fiction boundaries like yes it's like you know i would love like, that I think what you just said right there yeah. is is critical. Yeah. Like the the delineation between fiction mm -hmm. and nonfiction. Yeah. How do we like? And that's not just for children. Uh, when children grow up and they never learn the skill. We have adults that can't tell where the boundary is. Right. In more than one ways in our multifaceted social scenarios. 
Yeah. And we're beginning to see, I think, the fruits of that. I, I was literally just talking with someone last night about the dip, a single person and the difficulties of dating right now. Because this person is looking for a partner. And it's very, very difficult dating-wise now to find a partner because we can get our basic animal needs met mm -hmm. from something that doesn't care about us. Right. And like that's what that's to me what it comes down to. Yeah. Pornography is meeting your base needs mm -hmm. and it doesn't care yeah. about you. Yeah. It wants to take from you. Passive one way street. Yeah. You can give, but it can't give back. Right. You know, and and that is part of what makes it attractive. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it it can't not only it, it can't give back, but it also can't like throw back. It also yeah. can't hurt you. Like yeah. it's totally exactly what it is, and there's no like it's never yeah. gonna tell you that you didn't live up to its potential or mm -hmm. its expectations. It's never gonna tell you it's never gonna not laugh at your joke or or whatever your yeah. like nature of insecurity is. Yeah. And it be and it's in, and the more it becomes available, the more it. This is hyperbolic, but the more it takes from our soul. Like I really think there's something going on that is spiritual here. Like uh, I I am utterly convinced that pornography in general has made us worse than it has made us better. There may be uh, you know I'll hear arguments. From folks who are like, actually, me and my me and my spouse have rekindled our love life because you know, like, and yeah. I'll hear arguments about, uh, and I think there is probably some value. I've heard some some stories about that. However, I think broadly speaking, it's done far more damage societally speaking, like to to our relationships and to how we relate to each other, and and mainly our inability to relate to each other, our inability to commit to each other, and, and our inability to forgive each other and have, like, grace with each other. Like, uh, there are a lot of young men that I talk to these days who are completely disenfranchised with the idea of dating because sex work is just a far easier option. And and whether that's like massage parlors or pornography and masturbation or um or just straight up like going downtown and or like going to the strip club and like paying a woman straight up to like pretend she loves you, you know? Uh I have I've had a few conversations with those people and you know, it's anecdotal, but I think something's gone going wrong. I think something's going wrong about it. Yeah, but I I I feel some little like I feel some questions in it, which I'm like, yeah. we should talk like let's talk about yeah. what questions arise with like, w like with me saying that. That's a lot to put on just porn. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> it's not just porn. Yeah. But There's a deeper thing happening, I think. I, I think agree. porn's the candy, though, right? Like what you were saying, it's meeting the need because, like, we didn't learn the skills, so we found this outlet that's filling yeah. the need. And porn by itself maybe isn't all of it, but, like, again, it's the the little yeah, trail of breadcrumbs, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Like, so, can you say say more about it's not just porn? I, like, I think there's something well, there. I mean, like social skills, dating, it's a lot of work. I, I, who knows? Like, who, I don't know. But that just seems like a lot for like one little thing. So, I don't actually have a good. Well, so I because I think you're right for that. I, I just think, don't think that's all. I think all. you're absolutely right. I I, I completely agree I really with you. Agree. I think here's how I think the mechanism works, and this is totally me just observe. I, like this is normally I try to have some like research and mm -hmm. some. Yeah, I got. This is totally just my kind of thing on that. Here's what I think's happening. It used to be much harder to see boobies, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll speak from like my own like heteronormative kind of perspective. Like it used to be much harder to see boobies, and that forced me to learn how to talk, 
to learn how to be social, yeah. to learn and and it also forced my romantic interests yeah. to like be a little more gracious. Mm-hmm. Right. And to like accept my best attempts as yeah. Hey, that wasn't the perfect thing to say, but we're not going to call I can, quits right away. Yeah, I can, I can tell you're go, trying your best. Go. You know, yeah. right? The red, the reticent availability of pornography turns yeah. both of those interactions into why would I learn to talk to this woman? Like, so what does the church do to like let's decrease the like? How do we build art? young people up and we're like let's them foster this scenario and then also like what if we taught some of the pros for pornography and how to use it safely instead of pretending it doesn't exist so that kids don't hide in a closet for years and years and years and like feel nothing but shame and like I, and like how yeah. do we there's I don't have a, levels to adjust for that, that so I that think the second the question chat. you asked is really difficult i don't know that there is a good safe way to use pornography it's it's a little bit like guns in America, like it's. Hear me. I'm out. listening. <laughs> um, I think most people would be like a world where there's like wildly limited access to firearms, unless people actually really need them, would be the best. Uh, you're about my word. But. <laughs> the United States already has more guns than there are people. Yeah. And so now the question is like, well, the, yeah. it's out of the gate. Yes. So like, That's what are we going to do? Like, we're, we're never going to get that. We're right. never going to get those firearms back. Right. They're out there. And that's gotcha. kind of how I feel about pornography. Yeah. Like, it's okay. out there now. It's like, it's yeah. re- like, we're never going to get it back. And so the church's approach there is a temptation in me to say the church's approach should be abstain from pornography. Like it's bad for you. It re- and I do I think that it is really bad for you. And I think that scripture is pretty clear about like lust in general is bad for us. We shouldn't indulge in it. We we should try to avoid it. And also, doesn't that just make it hotter? You know, you know, like, doesn't that just make it worse? You know, like, saying we shouldn't do it, is, doesn't that just right. add to, like... Right. Yeah, sure, it just fuels the fire. Yeah, right, that, that's do. not a good way to do it. Yeah. So, I don't know the answer to your second question. Yeah. The first question you asked, though, is, like, what, are the, what does the church do to teach people to... To me, that's discipleship. Yeah. Like, um, sitting in church, listening to some guy talk... And like listening to like it's it's a horrible way to Good. develop your actual <laughs> okay, skills. Just make my opinion. Right. <laughs> yeah, like it's a terrible yeah, way. No. It's a terrible it's a worst way to learn anything to listen to somebody talk about it. Um actual discipleship and actual development mm-hmm. of conversational mm-hmm. skills, empathy, um, self identification with like what do you actually want in this interaction? How do you mm-hmm. actually feel now? Mm-hmm. Like those skills, because those are the, like those are the skills that Jesus demonstrates all the time in Scripture. Yeah. He knows what he's about. He's completely empathetic, especially to the people who are outcast and, and don't yeah. belong. Um, he's he's got a, a way with words and an ability to ask questions that invite people into the conversation. Like, he has all of these skills that should be part of discipleship. Mm-hmm. And, and also, by the way, as someone who dedicated myself to learning how to be that way, gets you gets you laid <laughs> like you know like no mm-hmm. granted i like i'm talking about my wife like but like mm-hmm. gets gets attractive people to engage with you once you become a safe place where you can just co- actually connect and, and and communicate with other people suddenly you become very attractive to other people because people are very desperate for that right now and so i think i don't while i don't have an answer to your second question yeah, because I think the the you know what what the cat's out of the bag, you know, like the sure. toothpaste is out of the I tube just, kind of thing. I yeah. I think the answer to your first question is the church should be teaching more appropriate discipleship, mm-hmm. so that rather than getting our base needs met by technology, yeah. we can get our base needs met by actual loving, committed relationship 
which is the ideal. That's the best way to do it, I think. I think if the church treated pornography like it did some other addictions of like, let's look at the root cause and then let's look at like, how can we like get your needs met in a safe way and like support you and so that you don't feel that you need to We need like a only. methadone porn. <laughs> well, know, just like so that there are options and not just. You know. And I feel like yeah. a lot of the conversation we're having is around like the daily porn watcher. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And like, and I don't yeah. know because mm-hmm. I've not been in that situation. But like, is it it's just like you were saying, like the attic? Like, okay, I can have a <laughs> glass of wine here and there, and everything's good. Yeah. I'm not having yeah. a bottle or two. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so is it one of those situations too, where like maybe that's part of the problem yeah. as well? Is again, needs are being met or something's being satisfied yeah. in me, so I'm doing more and more and more and more of it, and so then you are getting more disconnected because you're getting hooked on to this like i screen our time is up but oh like, yeah sorry <laughs> this one like i was a kid in high school that was on my laptop every day ex- like trying to wrestle with my sexuality and avoiding the online world and like finding a safe place and also mm-hmm. wasting my life away and not until college i was like oh wait we can use porn and also build social skills and like let's Balance. maybe like okay pile that back a little bit so yeah. all right uh, so Obviously, like, that was something that was helpful for you. Mm-hmm. Well, it turned out to be pretty detrimental, but it was my coping mechanism for the world at the time. Okay, so that, that okay, yeah. you're leading into where I'm trying to get at. Yeah, but, like, okay. that kid needed help in a way that yeah. he was not getting because he was, I mean, so gay my, and being shamed by the church from more than one angle. So that's that's my, wouldn't that's it be so want. much better? Right. If, yes, it's all helpful. Instead of having to turn to, like, basically inanimate pornography... Yeah you could have turned to your community yeah. and the community would have been like, hey man, what are you dealing with? No. Talk to us. Oh, whoa. Let's, right. like, like, let's, yeah man. Well, then we hit that. And, and also, we've been well, doing this for a while, so here are like several other people who have been, um, like here are several other gay Christians who have been going through this and they can actually talk to you about your specific stuff. And like, we have that as a part of our personality, as a part of our community, you know? Like, wouldn't that have been better? But now the church has to talk about actual sex. Yeah, well, yes. Well, because that's yeah. the thing, because now we'd be like, yeah. here's all these eligible bachelors right. for you. And it would be like, oh. Yeah, that was also specifically yeah. just like, oh, well, now you've hit the hot button line of like, we can't talk about porn or being gay or like any of these other things that we've said are bad and simple and you should not do them and you can't think about them. We don't want to hear about them is what I always got. It's like, why would I go to them? They're just going to tell me to like literally go to hell. Yeah. So like what? Which is... Sinful. They're good churches, bad they, churches. I, I don't mean like I mean yeah. what they were yeah, doing to that do that is to somebody. Objectively that okay. sinful. Yeah. Like it's the exact opposite of the person I read about when mm-hmm. I read about Jesus. It's the exact opposite. Like this is a guy who was talking with you know like man sinners and tax collectors and Samaritans. Man, like that's the every chance he got he was talking about people who were on the outside. And the church has done the opposite. And make that person just be like, you're broken, but we can maybe Don't, fix you. Hey, maybe you should but shut yeah, up. Like, you, you should you know, you, you know what would shut. fix you is if you shut up. Yeah. If you yeah. shut up and didn't be right. that way. Hey, you know yeah. the way you are? Yeah. Don't be that way. Lobotomy, just change like, it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Yes, it, it is. The, it's, it's exactly a lobotomy. If we just shut this person down, then they won't be a problem anymore. So like, that's, who are they a problem for? Oh, that's my number but, two question. That's like, how do we fix that response to like how that kid got there. Yeah, because I was gonna say that's that sounds like the road to porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. well, yeah, yeah. That, like oh, well, you're, almost begging, <laughs> you're almost funneling somebody into like, all right, well, if you're not gonna help, and I, obviously, not only are you not gonna help, you're not even gonna provide a, a like a situation yeah. where I could even yeah. ask the question. Right. Like that. Like so, it's it's far beyond not helpful. Yeah. Um, again, I do think the answer to that is better discipleship, yeah. like a more honest, more sincere examination oh, of like, a lot. is what you're doing harmful or helpful? Really asking yourself the question, mm. really, truly yeah. engaging, is this helpful? Is this harmful? 
And I think if the church did that in a more broader sense, which is, God, what I hope we're doing, well, it's, it's what I'm devoting myself to and what, I, what, I'm in, what I'm expecting all of our leadership to devote ourselves to. To me, sin comes down to, does it help, does it harm? If it's, and I don't mean hurt, because sometimes really good things hurt. I'm talking about harm. I'm talking about scarring and marring and leaving permanent damage, like harm. You know, if somebody says something that offends you, it's like, all right, well, yeah, that happens. I mean, but if somebody says something that, that traumatizes yeah. you, that's like that's different. Yeah. You know, like like there's a difference between I disagree with you and you're a real piece of, you know. Yeah. There's a difference between those two things, and it's and it's hurt and harm. You know, mm -hmm. like I disagree with you can hurt. I think you're a worthless piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. Harms. You know, like so, that, like, you know. Pornography is some harm and some... I think pornography... Like, adult usage at your discretion, like, with informed consent. I think, I think in our thing. current existence, the overwhelming majority, if not all of pornography, is harmful. And I think it's a failure of the church. That's my opinion. I hear what you're saying is, like... Hey man, th there may be instances where this mm -hmm. is a, like a path forward yeah. out of oppression, out of harm into something that is freedom and life giving. And but I'm not quite on board with you, but I can definitely respect mm -hmm. that as an opinion. Like I definitely respect that space. You know, like yeah, like yeah. I live here. <laughs> yeah. I live here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, yeah, we've gone way over, but I think it was important. I think it was a, a very valuable conversation. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his, <laughs> lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Amen.